In my introductory video on spark erosion, I promise to dive more into the details of how this process works in the coming chapters. So for this video I put my microscope into operation to show the drilling of a hole in the hardened steel of a razor blade with high magnification. The fact that the CNC on which my electrical discharge machine is based is controlled by open source software has proven to be advantages for the project. A few extra lines of code now cause the table with the razor blade to move forward under the microscope after each spark... ...to record the result... ...and then move back under the drill. I extracted a series of images from the video that shows the process of drilling the hole in individual steps, spark by spark and with high magnification. The metal surface of the razor blade is covered with grooves that run parallel to the longitudinal axis of the blade. The very first spark leaves a clearly visible crater on the surface of the razor blade. The diameter is about 0.7mm. It can be seen that the metal has melted and then solidified again. The irregularly shaped edge of the crater is not sharp but rounded by the ejected molten metal which also goes well above the surface of the razor blade. The second spark does not deepen the crater any further, it can be seen that molten metal has flown back into the first crater. You can also see that the second spark did not hit the surface in the exact same spot. The crater has been expanded to the top right of the photo. This is a basic principle of spark erosion. As with a thunderstorm in the Earth's atmosphere, the spark from this artificial mini thunderstorm only very rarely strikes the exact same spot again. I will go into the why in more detail in the chapters on plasma formation. The third spark produces a clearly visible crater again. ...which is partly refilled with material by the fourth spark, the random principle is retained during the drilling process. With spark number 8, the 0.1mm thick razor blade is shot through. This opening does not get bigger with the following shots. The sparks strike in a distance from the edge of the hole. Shot number 13 leads to a significant increase in the diameter of the hole. The parallel grooves on the surface of the razor blade hardly move from image to image under the microscope. The table of the CNC machine is obviously moved back and forth very precisely between the drill and the microscope. Which means that incorrect positioning as the cause of the different lightning strikes can be ruled out. The opening is enlarged spark by spark, also no circular hole is formed. The edge of the opening is very irregularly shaped, places with thick material alternate with thinner areas. The molten metal thrown out by the sparks piles around the resulting hole. For better results, the molten metal must be flushed away from the point of origin as quickly as possible. During spark erosion, the workpiece is usually flushed with the liquid in order to achieve exactly that. A second function of this liquid is to cool the workpiece. There is a clear discoloration of the metal to shades of blue around the hole and on the resolidified material which is due to excessive heat exposure. Furthermore, tiny particles made of metal that is quickly oxidized in the environmental air accumulate around the hole. In addition to physical effects, such as the melting or evaporation of material, a large number of chemical processes also take place in the oxygen-rich ambitioned air. You can see that the sparks melt different amounts of metal. Sometimes a lot of metal is removed. 
Then again only very little metal disappears and also in more than just one place. It obviously happens that more than a single spark is formed and the energy is thus transmitted in a less concentrated way. I therefore prefer to speak of one shot per frame rather than one spark per frame. In subsequent chapters I will go into more detail on how to control the energy transfer more precisely to drill more circular shaped holes. After 99 shots the opening is so wide that the 1mm drill dips in without further sparks jumping, the drilling process is complete. In principle the experimental setup works and a hole is drilled into the hardened steel of a razor blade. Under the microscope however this hole does not look very nice. If the shaft of the drill is added to the image it can be seen that the hole has become significantly larger than the 1mm drill specifies. The diameter is about 1.4mm and is anything but circular. One reason for the excessively large diameter is the imperfect runout of the milling spindle and another one the inaccuracy in the positioning of the milling table. But of course the gap which can be jumped over by the sparks with the applied voltage of 30V is decisive. In addition, metal particles ripped out can form a conductive bridge for a short time and thus increase the spark gap even further. If we assume the runout of the milling spindle and the positioning to be perfect, this gap is around 0.2mm. Let's take a close look at the 1mm drill because this is also made of steel. The initial state can be seen here. After drilling a few holes in the razor blade you can also see molten metal at the tip of the drill. The sparks obviously work in both directions. If the molten metal of the drill combines with the liquid metal of the razor blade, the two parts can weld together. The milling spindle is switched on so that the drill moves quickly enough to prevent that welding from happening. For another drilling I modified the experimental setup a little to get single images directly instead of a video stream. The remote control for the microscope is triggered by a movement along the X axis of the CNC machine via a glued on pen. I have published a video about the microscope on my second project, how open is this gadget? Drilling this hole took more than 7600 shots taken over a period of 36 hours. This hole is drilled into a knife blade, also made of hardened steel with a material thickness of about 0.5mm, this blade is therefore 5 times thicker. Material thrown out quickly accumulates around the drilling site. As previously stated, the dark color indicates that the metal has oxidized in air. This very fine dust contains various substances because steel does not only consist of iron. As already mentioned, many chemical and physical processes take place during spark erosion in air. The result is a grey brown film that settles on the surface. It can be seen that during the drilling process a crack forms in the center of the hole. Due to the constant melting and cooling, huge stress is applied to the material which causes the steel to crack.
Significantly more than just 500 shots are needed to pierce the blade which would be 5 times the razor blade with a fifth of the material thickness, which is partly due to the fact that the thicker material can dissipate heat more efficiently. Therefore less metal is melted per shot. When the hole gets deeper, the metal particles can no longer be thrown away as effectively. A large part of the material gets stuck in the drill hole and solidifies there again. Later videos will show how flushing with the liquid improves the erosion process by transporting the melted material away more effectively. The breakthrough created in the meantime is growing steadily. Further cracks caused by stress occur around the opening. The sparks tend to strike the shiny metal surfaces. The spots on which dust has settled are usually further away from the drill bit, but the non-conductive dust also inhibits spark formation. After 7617 shots, the drill process is complete. More information about this spark eroding machine is available on the Homo Fazians website, have a click. And if you would like to send me a motivational boost for the development of this and other open source machines, there is also a donate button on the project page. Thanks for every obble that some great people have already invested in me and my projects. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.